welcome to the 1994 British Touring Car Championship. Right then, hello and welcome back to GTR2 as we get ready for the double race weekend here in Northamptonshire at the Silverstone National Circuit for rounds 5 and 6 of the 1994 British Touring Car Championship. Um, as for the debacle a couple of weeks ago regarding the fuel issues with the cars, I think I have now fixed that issue so we shouldn't have any other retirements or problems with cars stopping, namely Jan Lammers, in front of me so I go up his chuff and retire from the race. So um, yeah, any retirements should be either caused by mechanical problems or this, that and the other. So um, yeah, so hopefully that's fixed. And uh, yeah, so with that, I will hand it back to Josh in the comms box as we get ready for the grid walk for round five. It's British Touring Car time once again here at the Silverstone National Circuit in Northampton. And what promises to be an exciting race weekend event as it is the second double header of the season. Let's take a look and see how they line up for race one. And as can be seen, it is another dominating, all conquering front row with Alfa Romeo locking out P1 and P2. Gabriele Tarquini ahead of Jean Piero Simone there. They really are going to be a force to be reckoned with throughout the season and will take a lot of beating. Lining up on row two, it is Joachim Winkelhock in the Schnitzer BMW and alongside him, John Cleland in the Vauxhall Cavalier. Commencing row three, it is Roberto Rivalia replacing Steve Soper this weekend as he has commitments out in Japan. And alongside him is John Cleland's teammate, Jeff Allen, in the other Vauxhall Cavalier. Row four, and it's Will Hoy starting out a really impressive qualifying there for the Toyota Carina, and alongside him is Alan Menu in the first of the Renault Lagunas. Paul Radisic starts row five in his Ford Mondeo, and alongside him is Ricard Rydell in the first of the Volvo 850s. Row six is very much a repeat of row four, a Toyota Carina ahead of a Renault Laguna. This time it's Tim Sugden ahead of Tim Harvey. An unbelievably quick lap put in by James K means he starts in P13, the best of the independents by a long way. And alongside him we have Andy Rouse in the second of the Ford Mondeos. Starting row eight is Matt Neal in the Mazda Exidos and alongside him is Jan Lammers in the other Volvo 850. Julian Bailey starts row nine and alongside him is David Leslie in the other Mazda Exidos. Patrick Watt starts row 10 in the first of the Peugeot 405s and Keith O'Dor alongside him in the first of the Nissan Primeras. James Thompson, the second of the Independents, starts row 11 and alongside him the manufacturer 405 of Eugene O'Brien. Row 12 is Dan Bartlett in the third of the Volvo 850s and he has Eric Vanderpol for company alongside him. Row 13 is Nigel Smith and Amish Irvine, an all independent row 13. And at the back of the grid is Chris Goodwin in his Vauxhall Cavalier and the luckless Nigel Albon in the Renault 19. He really does need a finish under his belt now. All that remains for me to do now is to hand you back over to Dan for the race start and race commentary. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Josh, for the grid walk as ever. Yes, and qualifying did actually go to plan this time. Unfortunately, I was way down in the pack, only a 1 minute 4.3 so I am well off the pace. My teammate's done a lot better this time. As you can see, we're coming up to Rickard Rydell on the left. And uh, even Jan Lammers did quite well in qualifying as well. So a couple of new faces in this race as well. We have uh, Roberto Ravaglia, Hamish Irvine as well, uh, joining the fray for the first race here at Silverstone National. So uh, hopefully everything should go according to plan this time. We shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. Touch wood. Um, so yeah, 22 laps ahead of us then. I've made sure as well, I was getting a lot of uh, brake locking before, and there's my car starting all the way in 23rd position. Oh my word. Oh well, I did want a uh, challenge for this season, so a challenge we're gonna get. Anyway, here we go then for round five. And... Off we go. A lot of wheel spin, but then it bogs down. Oh, come on, Smith. Now will everyone make it through cops clean? 
Oh, three wide. Nigel Albon with the dive on the inside there. Someone's gone a bit wide as well. I think that was James Thompson. And Eric Vanderpool. Now, luckily for me, when everyone all bunched up... Excuse me, Eric. Sorry, but you were in my way there. Um, everyone all bunched up. They usually console Tina up in the corner so we can get through a lot easier. So, uh, made it one position from the start, which is not too bad. Now, of course, this version of Silverstone National is not the version or the uh, configuration that they used in 1994. Because this part here... Oh, someone's lost a bit of bodywork. Uh, this part here is uh, different. It's uh, it was squarer back in the day, uh, so you didn't have the uh, the sweeping right hander. But that's okay. There there is no version available uh, with the old configuration of Silverstone National. So this is what we have to deal with. Not 100% authentic, but then <laughs> nothing has been in this series so far. But so far, so good. 22nd position. I'm happy with that. And we're having a little battle now with Keith O'Dor. And Eugene O'Brien as well. And my my rival for this championship ever since Thruxton, Patrick Watts. In the sister Peugeot as well. Excuse me. Now, what I've done, I've done a little bit of a setup change to the car. I've changed my brake bias a little bit because I was getting a lot of brake locking. So uh, I've moved the brake bias. Oh my word, Keith Odor. What are you doing? Or Keith Odor. Um, but yeah, so uh, shouldn't have as much of an issue of locking the front brakes now, so our tires should last a little bit longer. Um, I also mentioned as well during the first round at Thruxton is that during the season... I will be taking a little bit of weight bias off after each race. Well, I'm going to go back on that. And instead, what I'm going to do is, for the final race of the championship, I am going to purposefully... It's going to be a double header. So, the positions from race one are determined what, where the cars start for race two, as it always is. But um, for the first race, I am purposefully going to finish last. Because on the last race of the championship, I'm going to take all the weight bias off that I've put onto the car. And I'm going to work my way through the field for the final race. And hopefully, I should uh, get my first and only win of the championship in the good old Volvo. As uh, I go a little bit wide, get a bit of a problem with the handling because of the dirty tires. But so far, so good. We're up into 20th position. I will not be getting any points uh, this time round. The car is just not fast enough for the uh, Silverstone National Circuit. So we're just going to have to battle our way through the uh, the mid-pack, which is not too bad. Again, it's exactly what I wanted anyway. Uh, something seems to have happened to James Thompson. He's fallen right back and out to last in 28th place. Also, this series has been relatively kind to me as well. Before, in 1993, I mean, there were incidents and accidents all over the place, so I'd have to keep adding the replays like I did with Thruxton. But so far, there's been no real incidents or retirements as such, so I haven't had to add in any replays as such, which is cool. It saves me a little bit of editing work. Oh, rear end stepping out a little bit. That's because of the brakes. I've got it more set to the rear. Julian Bailey. Oh, who was that? That is Matt Neal. Of course, this is a 22 lap race. In reality, this race was shortened to just 19 laps because Matt Neal had a colossal accident where he was uh, T-boned while going three wide and uh, his car rolled several times and he was uh, injured and put out for the rest of the season. So, uh, tomorrow... Uh, during tomorrow's race. His car is not going to be on the grid for obvious reasons. So I'm going to try and keep the lore of this series going. Uh, and there were actually quite a few retirements uh, in uh, the first race as well. But because this is a fictional take on 1994, obviously I'm going to do be doing the full lap amount. So it's going to be 22 laps rather than 19. 
just to keep it fair, really. I'm loving this. This is a nice little tussle, catching up and then losing position or losing ground on the other drivers. So after the fifth completed lap, Tarquini is leading Simone, who has the fastest lap at the moment, and Jochen Winkhock is currently third. I'm going to be overtaken by Keith O'Dor, but I'm going to swing back, get the overcut, and take the position back. I think we're still side by side. I can hear him. Should have the advantage. Oh, I've, I've taken way too much of the apex. I'll have to give some of it back on the next lap. Uh, John Clennon currently in fourth with his teammate Jeff Allen in fifth. And uh, newcomer to the championship, Roberto Ravaglia in sixth. Um, in reality, he retired in both races at Silverstone. So, but who knows, in my fictional take of this championship, he might score some good points. So you never know. Nigel Smith has now uh, dropped to the very back and is in last place. I'm going to have to get myself some sticky notes, you know, because my brain is like a sieve and I forget corner names constantly. The only ones I don't really forget is Brands Hatch because it's, you know, it's such a short circuit anyway. So you got Paddock Hill Bend, Druids Bend, uh, and Clearways. I don't know some of the other ones. I think Graham Hill Bend is another one as well. But I'll have to get some sticky notes just to stick on my monitor with the corner names of the tracks because a couple of them I just cannot remember. This one in particular, and this track, you know, has a fairly easy name for most of the corners, except for Cops, of course. And then you got like uh, Alton Park where you have, uh, what is it, the, uh, oh god, I was going to say Craner Curves then, but no, that's Donington. Donington Park, I know pretty much all the corner names, that's the only one that I've really learnt. Um, but you got the Cascades at Alton Park, and then you got Knickerbrook, Clay Hill, Deer Leap, and that's pretty much it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to study the uh, corner names a little bit. Just so I don't keep saying, oh, we're going around this corner. Like an, 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 like an uneducated buffoon. So, we're losing pace now from Julian Bailey. He's now 5.9 seconds up the road. Uh, we got the other newcomer, Hamish Irvine. In, uh, well, directly behind. Uh, Jochen Winklehock has overtaken Simone for second place. Oh no, he's taken him back again. I just had a glance up, so. It was a temporary overtake. So we're coming up to start lap number nine. Lovely. Everyone is spreading out now and getting into their rhythm, so lap time should start increasing. Mine obviously won't. But you never know, because we will be lapping cars on this race because of the short confines of Silverstone National. So if we lap, for example, Nigel Albon, who is, I will say, is in 24th place, ladies and gentlemen. He isn't last. That is uh, taken over by Nigel Smith. So, yeah, so Nigel Albon doing really well in this race, which is very, very shocking. Oh, come on. Don't understeer on me now. But yeah, if, I mean, if we can catch up to some of the back markers who are going really slow anyway, some of the independents, then uh, if the little gaggle of cars up ahead of me catches them, we might have a chance of gaining a few more positions, which should be alright for tomorrow's race. But we don't know. Simone still has the fastest lap time at the moment. Tarquini is leading by just over a second, or just under a second. It's hard to look up at the scoring timing while turning. 
Uh, yes, just over a second, I would say. Dare I say it, though. Dare I say it and jinx this race. But we are 10 laps in, or on the 10th lap, and no one has crashed. No one has spun. And it's been really clean. Now watch, there's going to be a massive 20,000 car pileup going through the last corner. Guaranteed. Or your money back. No, it's still just a bit of debris on the side there from lap one. But, no. No, everyone is still clean, so I didn't jinx it this time. What's my engine looking like? 86%. Good number. Uh, so our engine is absolutely fine. So I'm just pacing myself now. I know I'm not going to have any chance of catching Julian Bailey in 19th. So I'm just going to pace myself, try and put in as many good lap times as possible to keep Hamish Irvine behind. And uh, we should be alright for the setup for race 2 tomorrow. Oh, 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 excuse me. Had a, a, a lot of understeer there. The, the steering just went very, very loose. So my tires are still going off fairly quickly. There's Hamish behind in the BMW. But we shouldn't have any issues with them because they're all the independents anyway. They're a bit lower down on power compared to the works teams. Well... Compared to most works teams, anyway, and except me, I think I've even got a slower card than the independents. Rumble over the curbs. Now, I'm just hoping that when we get to three laps to go, no one dives into the pits. So I've had to change everything in the um, AIW file. There is a line on the uh, text document that has the fuel use. So I've had to add an extra 12,000 uh, of uh, the fuel use parameters or the threshold. Um, because everyone was just running out of fuel way too early. I'd done a test race again at Snetterton after uh, round four, and everything seemed to be fine. So I'm hoping that if we can get past lap three, or with three laps to go, that seems to be the cutoff point where everyone starts running out of fuel. If we can get past three laps to go and everyone's still racing, then I know I've fixed the issue. But I had to do that for every single upcoming race as well. Joachim Winklehog is now taking over second place with the fastest lap time. We do have a bit of dust kicked up in front. And even more dust as well. It seems like someone's gone very wide. That would be Patrick Watts, because he's dropped down a bit. Nothing replay worthy. Fortunately for me, because I don't have to edit anything in. Hamish is now creeping up on my rear deck lid. Oh, Jan Lammers has now dropped down to 19th place. Where's Ricard Rydell? Bloody hell, he's up in 8th. Way to go, Rick. Maybe the uh, tyres are starting to go off on the Volvos, who knows. 
Yeah, you can see the understeer of my car. Oh, what is the name of that corner? God, I can never remember. Well, it is nice to see a couple of cars in front of me anyway, rather than just a clear track. On lap 15 already. Race has gone by very quickly. A lot of dust being kicked up by the Volvo. I think he's really having handling issues. We are gaining on Lammers as well, actually, so this bodes well for another position gained. Potentially, anyway. All 28 cars are still circulating the circuit. Unfortunately, that is not going to be the case tomorrow. There's going to be a lot of empty spaces on the grid for tomorrow. So, just be warned. He's gone wide again, so Jan Lammers is not having a good time of it at all. Give him a little flash of the lights. See if we can get up into no 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 nineteenth. Guaranteed though I will not receive a hero's welcome. 20 points for anyone who gets that reference. Joachim Winkelhog has now taken the lead of the race away from Gabrielli Tarquini. Yep, he's having handling issues, definitely. So, up into 19th I go. Patrick Watts is next, but he's seven seconds up the road. There he goes. So, anyone new who has joined in this series during this race, hello. Um... And you're probably wondering, why are you going so slow? So I'll just recap. Is uh, the Volvo 850 Estate on this game, the mod, um, has its own physics build. Uh, because of that, the handling was very, very bad. So you would get a lot of oversteer. To compensate that, I am using a different tyre compound, which makes my car incredibly overpowered, where I was three seconds faster than... Gabrielli Tarquini in the Alfa Romeo. So to compensate for that, I've added an extra 300 kilograms of weight to my car. So that makes me very heavy, but it also makes me very slow, more midfield range. As you can see, I'm in 19th place. So, um, and as I discussed at the beginning of the race, is that on the last race of the season, round 21, I will be purpose purposefully starting at the back and taking all of that weight off. And I will start from the back of the grid and hopefully make my way up into the lead and win a race. So yeah, that'll be fun. Okay, we're in the bracket where everyone usually runs out of fuel. So everybody keep your fingers crossed and hold onto your butts. Oh, a bit of debris. I was looking up at the timing. 
I don't think that causes any damage to my car. I think that is literally just a bit of debris that's been put on the circuit and that's it. Uh, Rickard Rydell, he is also having issues. He was in the top 10, dropped now down into 13th place. So all the Volvos are out of the points. Which is a massive shame. Right, here we go. This is where things could work or couldn't work. We got three laps to go. Keep our fingers crossed that no one dives into the pits or runs out of fuel. My tires are dead. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the timing. Just hoping no one dives into the pits. Oh, my tires, the front tires have completely gone now. I've seen that Tarquini is also uh, losing positions. Oh, look at that understeer. That is atrocious. Two to go. I haven't even needed to use sixth gear in this race yet. Someone's gone wide. And we are coming up to the last lap and no one has gone into the pits. No one at all. So yes, my little fix for the fuel has definitely worked so that has made me incredibly happy i don't care that we're going to be finishing in 19 oh do you see that in my rear view mirror then keith odor has literally spontaneously combusted and has blown up on the side of the track that was a sight to behold just see this ball of flame coming at me i'm like bloody hell well, that's good, because that has pushed Eugene O'Brien back. So yeah, Keith O'Dor is retired, and he is now off on the side of the circuit. And it's the only retirement. I don't even have to put up a replay of that, because you've seen that perfectly in my rearview mirror. So... Uh... No, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. So we had one retirement, at least. That's got to be a good thumbnail, anyway, if I can get a good angle of... Uh, Keith O'Dor blowing up behind me. And there we go. We finish in 19th place. No one retired apart from Keith O'Dor. And that wasn't fuel related. So the fix worked. And for that, I'm well and truly chuffed to bits. You'll see Keith O'Dor. There he is. Stuck in the gravel. His car still smoldering. Right. So our guest this week then. I've kept you all in suspense long enough. Um, in my opinion, he is a true living legend of motorsport. Not only was he a, quite a successful co-driver in the rallying world back in the 1970s, winning a couple of rallies in the UK and South Africa, but can now more recently be found running up and down some of the world's best pit lanes on earth. Uh, namely the Daytona 24 hours, the Le Mans 24 hours, uh, Barcelona 24 hours, Dubai 24 hours, Sebring 12 hours, the Petit Le Mans, to name but a few. Um, so yeah, with 40 plus years 
of motorsports journalism under his belt. I am absolutely honoured to introduce the guest this week is none other than Andrew Marriott. So let's check out the results of Saturday's race. Victory for Smoking Joe Winklehawk in the Schnitzer Run Factory BMW ahead of the Alfa Romeo of Gampiero Simone. In third place, the second of the BMWs, Roberto Ravaglia, standing in, of course, for Steve Soper, who's racing the BMW out in Japan. In fourth place, the second of the Alphas, Gabriel Tarquini. Remember, he won the first five rounds of this championship. In fifth place, the best of the Brits, John Cleland, who led home his teammate, Jeff Allen, in the Vauxhall Cavalier. Now let's look at the total cup for privateers and a victory for the Toyota of James Kay ahead of Hamish Irvine in the BMW. In third place, the Renault 19 of Nigel Albon. In fourth place, it's Chris Goodwin. In fifth position, James Thompson. And in sixth place, team schemes is Nigel Smith in the Cavalier. And there we go then, normal service has been resumed, everything worked out perfectly and we had a bit of a fireworks display from Keith O'Dor as well. So yeah, with that we're going to be starting in 19th place for tomorrow's race and a massive, massive, massive thank you again to Josh for doing the grid walk and the one and only Andrew Marriott for providing the voiceover for the race results. And I will see you then tomorrow, same time, same place, 10pm UK time for race number two of the weekend and round six of the 1994 British Touring Car Championship from Silverstone National. So thanks for watching, take care, stay safe, and I will see you all tomorrow.